Our next speaker is Lo Wei Lin from Pharmacology and Toxicology. Does anyone remember what happened in San Francisco on September 9, 2020? I'm sure many of the residents still remember that day because the city was going orange from wildfire smoke. It is clear that wildfire smoke can trigger a series of respiratory symptoms, but do you know wildfire smoke can also pose dangers to the skin? Many studies have linked wildfire smoke to skin problems. For example, like firefighters who are occupationally exposed to wildfire smoke have a higher risk to develop skin cancers. In 2018, when the campfire choked the San Francisco Bay Area, local health clinics noticed an increase in the number of patients visiting with concerns of atopic dermatitis an inflammatory skin condition. What I do for my research is exposing the skin cells with small chemicals to investigate how they damage the skin. So you can think of the skin barrier as a fortress. Its job is to protect us from environmental pollutants. However, this barrier is not invincible. When constantly attacked by environmental insults, this barrier can be damaged and its protection against outside threats can be compromised. And from our study, we found out that when the cells are exposed to wood smoke chemicals, they have disrupted structure protein structure uh, composition. So normally, the skin cells use structural protein as a building material for the barrier, just like a stone used to build a fortress. So from our finding, we can come to the conclusion that wildfire smoke can damage the skin by altering its barrier composition. Skin with altered barrier composition has been associated with aging, inflammation, and cancer. In addition, skin with impaired barrier function is like a collapsing fortress. It might not provide us with protection that is strong enough against outside threats and leading to increased invasion of environmental pollutants and infectious microbes into our bodies. And finally, besides protecting yourself from wildfire smoke, I do want to encourage everyone to start taking actions on climate change, which is known to increase wildfire risk. It's not only for the sake of your lung, but also for your sake, for the sake of skin, and beauty. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this, this is the type of topic that everybody uh, can feel a direct connection with, especially in the region that we live in. Have you shared it? Have you shared your research with uh, people outside of your research circle? And yes, I do. Um, it was interesting when there was one time I was talking to my friends about my research. And then she's a person in engineering department, so all she thinks about is like how to apply science. <laughs> and she asked me like, oh, so, so what about your research? And I was shocked. I was like, this is an important area. Like, <laughs> people should care about that. <laughs> and then I, you know, it, it kind of brings me to think about how significant it was. So my research is. so. So that's why I come up with like, you know, how to bring my research into public awareness. You know, if we know like why something is dangerous, why something is toxic, then people do take action to prevent them from happening. So yeah. <laughs> so, so now that you've started on this science communication path, let's call it, um, uh, what do you envision being able to achieve with that new tool in your toolbox? Um, so, being on a TED Talk is always in my bucket list. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, I, I was inspired by one of the uh, instructors from our department, and he was really good at teaching. And I was, I was TA for him, and at the first day, I was sitting in his lecture, and he was teaching environmental toxicology, and I just feel like I'm sitting in a comedian show. And it's very educational, like all 126 students enjoy his lecture. Mm. And I, I hope I can be that person, you know, bring science to the people and then make them interested in science. Mm. Okay. 
So looking back to uh, your path since you decided to participate in this competition, posted the videos, and now here you are, what is the most valuable thing you think you learned from that process? From preparing for yeah. the Graceland? Um, I think it's probably the, the time control because I'm notorious for speaking really fast when I'm nervous. So when I was practicing for this one, I was aiming for three minutes, but I, I, I obviously finished like 15 seconds faster. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, and I, I remember there was one time I was preparing for a lecture that's like 15 minutes lecture and I finished in 35 minutes. Mm. And you know, my students like it because they can get up class earlier, so. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, so um, from practicing uh, Graceland, I do learn how to do time control. I realize there's a lot of words I can finish within one minute, so. Yeah, I, I think that's the valuable, valuable thing I learned. Okay. So would you uh, mind sharing with us what you do when you're not doing research? No, I'm doing research. <laughs> I see. <laughs> it takes me a minute. Because <laughs> <Okay. laughs> all I think about is research. No, mm. I'm just kidding. So mm. um, yeah, I do enjoy hanging out with friends and you know we have people we can play games together like volleyball or like we go hiking or you know we we do tennis or badminton so it's always mm. nice to get out of, of school and lab and do some exercise and have fun with friends okay all right yeah. thank you <laughs>